this morning, good morning, uh, I was up early, we shot across to Screwfix, had to go to the Harworth branch for once because they didn't have in stock what I wanted, which was these abrasive wheels. So I know yesterday I talked about getting some new blades for the saw, which uh, the plan was to get two of these, sacrifice one of them to finish cutting the steel that I've got, and then use the other one as a nice clean blade for cutting timber. So I was looking on the Screwfix website last night, and uh, it's really tricky to find blades to fit the arbor size. I'm gonna have to get myself some reducing rings, or a new arbor for this Evolution Rage saw because they're 25.4 millimeters and most circular saw blades are either 30 mil or 20 mil ID, particularly with the abrasive wheels. But I did manage to find two of these uh, universal fit uh, abrasive wheels on the Screwfix website. One of them at 355 millimeter diameter and the other one at 300. Unfortunately, my saw only carries 255 millimeter diameter blades. So initially, I thought, well, they're three quid each. A hell of a lot cheaper than 30 pound for a saw blade. And who knows, once they're cutting, they might cut really well. So I thought I'd take a punt. So I went across this morning, didn't quite go to plan. When I got there, the 300 millimeter blades only have a 20 millimeter hole in the middle which is incorrect on the Screwfix website. Fortunately for me, the ladies swapped them out for me and we got the 355s. I kind of thought that the 300s were gonna to be too big anyway, so I thought, I'll see if I can cut them down. Inevitably, I had to cut the 355 mil blades down by that much, which is quite a, quite a ring. Um, and basically I just stuck a diamond wheel on the four and a half inch grinder as you saw then, made a little bit of a jig and it's worked quite well and I must say after having made a cut with it it's actually a cleaner finish it's actually a cleaner finish on the cut than what the saw blade was giving me yesterday and it doesn't look like there's been too much wear on the blade so, fingers crossed, I've only done two cuts, mind. Fingers crossed, these stand up quite well and I'll be able to run through all these cuts without using up all of the blades. I've got five of these, by the way. I cut them all down as well, so they'll fit on without having to take the arbor and go back to the jig. So I'm gonna carry on doing this, folks, and then we will hopefully get to do some welding and assembly of the stools. I also got some black hammerite paint to paint the frame up as well. Can you paint hammerite straight onto mill scale? I'm sure you can.
down. <laughs> that was one hell of a task. So, 16 stools, 32 legs, hundreds of cuts, probably into the thousands with the bloody wells. Four on each side, on each one, two, three, four, and then yeah, hundreds, hundreds, maybe a few thousand welds, short little welds. I've enjoyed it though, I really do enjoy welding, I don't know why, I just, uh, maybe it's because it's not my career. Uh, so the next task is get these up on the table, just going to let them cool for five minutes, and then we'll put cross braces in. In fact, before I do that, I might just drill the holes at the top for the screws. I could have done it in the drill press while they were before they were welded I guess ah yeah it's 32 holes to drill though isn't it so no it's not it's 64 bugger better get on with it to get together uh, four of the stools so far um, the time's ticking on though it's approaching half past five quarter to six actually looking at the clock and uh, I'm gonna have to go home I went up to the pub to try the Ella that I made a couple of weeks back not really for me it's a little bit on the bitter side but some people like it it's like the grapefruit pith bitterness if you know what I mean I'm talking of pith. Anyway, I stopped up there and had a couple of beers, then came back down and did a couple of welds, put together these three chairs. So I put those together, basically. And then I kind of realized that uh, even though I've only had two beers, one of the chairs was a little bit more crooked than I'd prefer to let go through the door. So on reflection, and because of the time, we'll pack it up today and we'll carry on tomorrow. I've still got the vlog to edit, of course, you know, my day doesn't finish here. Uh, I've been reading the comments as well. I just thought I'd quickly mention this before I shoot off because literally this is it, I'm done. Um, the tilt hydrometer is probably a go. I'm not going to get it this week or next week. I'm going to wait on it a little while to get some more information in. But the idea behind it is I will be able to track fermentation progress and dry hop and do a diacetyl rest and everything like that without having to open my tanks up and take a physical reading. And let's face it, the diacetyl and the dry hop doesn't matter if you're a couple of gravity points either way. And it's going to save me a lot of time like that. And of course, if you had a small homebrew kit, it'd save you a lot of beer and another benefit from having the tilt hydrometer is that every single fermentation that I do in the brewery moving forwards once I've got one I will be able to plot a graph of the fermentation profile so if something doesn't taste right let's say I've done a batch of the vacant I'll be able to say oh look it didn't it didn't peak at that temperature or there was a little dip there you know what I mean so I do need more information about the tilt so keep linking down in the description guys and give me your knowledge share it other than that I'm gonna turn off the gas put my welding helmet on the wall and we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>